welcome to the yarn parlor. My name is Allison. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as a love at one. Today is November 22nd. This is episode 34. I missed podcasting last week. Things got a little busy, so I need to take a break and I'd prefer letting you guys know in advance about those things. So I apologize. Um, these things happen though. So, uh, here I am. Uh, this is my podcast about knitting, spinning, and knitwear design, and you can find show notes. I post them on Thursdays in the Ravelry group. Uh, today's episode, I will be going over the 500 subscribers giveaway. Um, I have an FO, some whips, uh, spinning, and um, fiber applications acquisitions from my trip to New York that um, I sent back to myself and a quick um, shop announcement at the very end so we will start with the giveaway um, I put in the Ravelry group a question about um, traveling and um, through random generator number dot org whatever um number 23 popped up which is me knit crochet so if you could pm me with your um well first we'll go over what bags you want it's going to be um two bags we can talk about which styles you would like and um and then i'll get your address and i can send those out to you i'm going to put together some little Israeli goodies to go along with the whole um, package. And I need to do more giveaways, I think, because I really enjoyed that. I enjoy reading everybody's answer about, um, this one was about traveling, if money was no object, where would you travel? And everybody's answer was delightful and uh, very entertaining. So I think I need to do some more giveaways. <laughs> <laughs> to get you guys answering more questions. Um, but thank you to everybody who participated. Uh, I loved everybody's answer. It was a lot of fun. Um, on to my FO. So I finished, I still need to weave in some of the ends, but I finished my chunky cowl that I made with my hand spun. Um, and I am able to wrap it around twice. It didn't, the height isn't, let me put it on. So it fits nice and snug and it's super bulky and I love it. I wish it was a little bit taller just to be even bigger but um this height works fine I mean it's hand spun that's all that I had I used up everything and it's glittery and it's fun and it was um it's an easy knit it's just a seed stitch knit in the round cowl um what else? I used US 17 needles. Not sure what that is in millimeters, and I didn't write it down. And uh, yeah, so that's my FO that I finished. I just need to weave in some of the chunkier ends and cut them. I probably won't block this. It doesn't really need to be blocked. It's simple enough. Moving on to whips. For my first whip, I'm working on my socks. So I'm using, this is for November sock, and the yarn is Black Bunny Fibers. There it is caked up. And it's sparkly and it's pastel-y and I love it. I like the way it knit up. Here's where I was two weeks ago. <laughs> Um, 
and I decreased at the toe. You can see the funny kind of lumpy shape it's showing up better over here. These decreases um, because I have, I like it to fit snug on my foot. So I decreased and you can see how the, um, the spiral pattern changed from the top of the foot to the bottom where I decreased. Um, just from decreasing, it was four stitches each time and I did that twice. And I'll do it, it makes this funny shape, but I'm sure that on the, once I block it and everything, it'll block out smooth and it won't be such a problem. I'm using the smooth operator pattern with the vanilla latte pattern just to get a little um, a little stitch interest so it's not just a plain vanilla sock and there it is one done um i like uh, the smooth operator sock is a uh, pattern is from Susan B. Anderson and a lot of people have been using it recently which made me want to use it and it's an afterthought heel so I really enjoy afterthought heels so I thought I'd give it a go. There are a couple things that I would probably do different. I'm trying to follow her pattern exactly as it's written. Um, I think it's a great pattern. There are a couple things that I would do that I like to do a little bit different when doing my afterthought heels. Um, one being that I like to knit the whole leg before putting in the heel and her um, instructions are written a little bit different and also for I don't mind cutting um, in my heel because then I don't have to figure out where the placement of my heel right away when I'm just mindlessly knitting the whole leg um, but she puts in a waist yarn and I would if I were going to put in a waist yarn, I would probably just knit one row with the waist yarn. One, like, obviously half the, right here, one half the, for the heel. Anyway, um, and she also wrote something a little bit different in her pattern. The pattern is a paid for pattern and I still, in, I absolutely enjoy it and it's worth the money because she keeps updating it with so many different tips and tricks and just adding to it and... Um, I think you can learn a lot and if you're interested in afterthought heels, I think it's a great pattern. There are just some things that um, I would do a little bit different when knitting an afterthought heel. But I have started my second one. I don't think I will get November's socks done, but I'm very close. To actually achieving that goal um, maybe the beginning of December if I'm continue at this rate but um, they're turning out great um, oh this yarn is like I said it's black bunny fibers and it is the sugar pop colorway which is 20 nylon 75 superwash merino and 5 Stellina so there's a little bit of sparkle in there I'm not sure if it's picking up but um, they're great I'm knitting the size medium and then decreasing down to the small for the foot it's so interesting how the when you decrease how much it really affects the spiral on the sock it's cool I love these colors. I love the way that it's coming out. So those are my November socks. Then moving on to my next whip, which is a new one. I was looking for a pattern to knit my cheddar yarn um, or cheese. Is it cheese or cheddar? It's cheese. Uh, cheese yarn with. And um, I was looking for a hat pattern. And I came across the Ricky. And uh, Amy Beth from Fat Squirrel Fibers. Yeah, Fat Squirrel Speaks. 
Fat Squirrel podcast. Um, her past couple episodes, she's been wearing her Ricky hat, and she absolutely raves about it, and it's one that I've wanted to try. So when I came across it in my search for hat patterns, I was like, you know what, that's it. I'm just going to cast one on. So I did. Um, I don't have that much done, but here's my Ricky hat. And I'm knitting it with um, knit strings, knit cosmic strings. This is their ripple colorway, and then this is a DK yarn. And I'm loving it. Oh, um, the Ricky is by Sarah Young. Yes. And it's a free pattern. But you have to go, when you click the link through the Ravelry um, page, pattern page, you go to an online shop and you have to like pretend to buy it, one of those deals, but, um, but it's free. And yeah, I don't know. It's super simple and easy. And Joanna Spring from Knit Spin Farm and Amy Beth, I think they both have done theirs where you it's garter stitch in the round and they have they um do th this technique where you wrap and turn so that you don't have to purl any of the rows i'm just knitting it in the round so i'll knit a row and then purl a row um because i don't actually like the way that the wrap stitch comes out here's my seam if you can see it right there mm, right here and it leaves kind of a seam looking divot when I switch over, but theirs is like, I don't know, it, it looks like a real seam, which isn't a problem because I mean it's flat anyway, it's not like a bumpy seam or anything, but uh, to me it looks more noticeable and I don't mind purling, so yeah. I didn't opt for that option, but if you're interested in knitting the Ricky hat, there is another option of um, wrapping and turning. I forget. I think they mention who has, I think there's a video on how to do that technique. I'll put it on the screen somewhere. I'm sure I'll find it. Um, but if you're interested in the Ricky hat, there is another option instead of doing garter in the round of wrapping and turning at your seam so that, yeah, you don't have to purl any of the rows. So this is a great mindless knit for me right now. <laughs> As if my vanilla latte socks are a little bit too much to handle. <laughs> I needed something even simpler. Um, and then my last whip is the Silver Wing Shawl. I did start it the last time I just showed you the yarn. And that's by Amy Vandalar. And here it is. This is a paid for pattern. Um, and this is more of a, just a, an accessory. This isn't going to keep me warm in the winter time. It's a shawl. And um, it's a, like a basic lace for anybody who's interested in trying out lace. It's a lovely knit. I've been enjoying it so far. Um, I don't have that much done, but I've been enjoying it. And the yarn is from Walk Collection. And it's the colorway is Metal Dust. And it is 50 alpaca, 25 linen, 25 silk for 100 grams. Yeah, 100 grams, 400 meters. And it kind of reminds me of Metallurgy from Northbound Knits. That's one I haven't tried yet. I really want to try the Metallurgy one. Yarn. Um, but it's very similar. I think hers is a little bit darker. But I like that. And it's a nice, it's neutrals. So I can pair it with everything. Um, and that's it for my 
Oh, I'm knitting this on US sixes, four millimeter, which is what the pattern calls for, which makes it even drapier and holier along with like the silk and the, the linen. It's gonna be a very drapey neck accessory. Um, yeah, that's what I've been working on for the past couple weeks. Those are my, my whips. And before I move on to spinning, I did want to talk about, I think it was my September yarn, my Habu that I showed. Habu? Yeah, Habu yarns. The silk. I got a couple comments that I, and I wanted to try this out. I'm just gonna mention it here because there were a couple suggestions about how to use it differently. Um, one of which was to uh, spin a single and ply it with my hand spun yarn. And the other suggestion was to just knit it with another um, solid yarn so that it would be easier to knit with and maybe I would like that construction better or technique better, usage better. Um, so I'm definitely going to try those two suggestions and I will show them in with my November swatch challenge in a couple weeks or so. Um, but I just wanted to mention here because they were really good suggestions and I'm definitely going to try them. On to spinning now. So first let me show you, I um, soaked my Cheviot into the world's Navajo ply yarn um, and this is what it looks like. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show you it soaked and uh, I will be continuing this. This is for some socks. So, and I was trying to get a fingering weight and it's a little bit thicker than fingering weight, but there is some fingering weight in there, but it's more of a sport, some DK areas. So I'll probably try and find a sport weight um, sock pattern to knit these with. What I have been working on is part of my acquisition. Sorry for the rustling. When I went to, when I went home back to the States, I went to the uh, Big Eastern Fair. And while there, I found some alpaca roving. And this is from Clark Summit Alpacas. There's their card. And it was four little balls, bumps of alpaca in four different colors, all natural. And I have spun two of them. I just needed a palette cleanser with all of my spinning projects. I patience and I want to try on try and spin something new and I usually try and make it something that's small and fast I try to make it a faster project so I thought that these four would be perfect and I haven't spun 100% alpaca yet so um, I had to dive right in they're so soft this fiber is amazing if you have a chance to buy alpaca from this place. I'm sure alpaca everywhere is soft and gorgeous, but it's just, I definitely like their roving. It's easy to draft and work with. And the yarn that I produced, I am so happy with. It's a two ply and it's kind of DK worsted. It's pretty consistent. It's so soft and so springy and squishy. I'm in love with what I've produced. So here's the two, the cream and the fawn, the two lighter colors. Now I'm working with the medium, well, I guess this is more fawn color. Cream, tan, fawn, and the chocolate brown. So it's it was two ounces total, um, point, what is it? Half ounce each and um, 
yeah, I'm absolutely loving spinning this. The yarn I'm producing, I'm very, very happy with. So this was a perfect little side project amongst all my spinning whips. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I've been spinning. Is that all I've been spinning? Yes, that is all I've been spinning this past couple weeks. Um, moving on to my fiber acquisitions. The first acquisition is a loop bump. I can't, I can't resist a loop bump. So here is the loop bump that I picked up. It is same as my last one um, for content, merino, nylon, and angelina. This is six ounces and the colorway is wine country. So it's, it's a little bit out of my comfort zone for colors. But whenever I see other people's loop bumps when they show them off on their podcast, I'm always like, I love those colors. They're so great, but they're not really what I would choose. Um, but they spin so beautifully. The combinations are awesome and they look great. So I thought I would pick up something that's not normally what I would pick up. So I have to finish my first one before I jump in on this and all my other spinning whips. So there was that. Next, I ordered some fiber from Hip Strings, which I found on um, Etsy. And they have this, it's their special blend and it's called Bowie. And it's 37.5 BFL, 37.5 Shetland, and 25% uh, Manx Lauten wool. I've never used that before, so I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> um, but I got a lot of it because I want to spin a hap shawl, hopefully. So I got a couple colors to use as more of like the base and then I got their sampler because they have a whole array of colors in this um, blend. So I got four ounces of, this one's called Breakwater, this colorway. So this I would use as the majority base. It's just a brown, works out great. Then I got the lobster colorway. I love that. And also four ounces. And then I wasn't sure, I wanted to get four ounces of every single color they had, but then I saw that they had a sampler pack and I thought that that might be the safer, safer route. So I bought their sampler pack and I hope the glare isn't too bad there. Um, wait, where's the colors? So it's bay, kelp, urchin. Um, is that correct? Urchin, otter, no, yes. No, I don't think that's right. I think this is otter, this is sea star, and then there was another one, beacon which I spun. I'm going to be spinning this into a single. And then, like I said, I want to knit a um, hap shawl and just kind of pop in stripes of the colors throughout. And this fiber, I taught my mom how to spin and I stole her sample because I hadn't soaked it when I was home and I wanted to soak it for her. And I'm not sure if I'm going to knit it into something or just send it to her so she can knit it into something. But here is my mom's first spin out of, I think it was the otter colorway. So it's thick and thin and a little bit overspun in some places, but I think she did a really good job and she was having so much fun doing it. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And that was what I got from Hip Strings. Then 
Um, I purchased a braid from Port Fiber, which is also on Etsy. And here is that braid. And it is um, Superwash Merino 80 percent 10 nylon 10 cashmere it's an MCN and I haven't spun with cashmere before and I thought that this would be the perfect spin for another pair of socks apparently I like to spin for socks now <laughs> because I love knitting socks um, maybe it'll get me to really like knitting socks when I use my hand hand spun yarns but this colorway was called Fashionista and it's these hot pinks and berries and I just thought it was beautiful. And it's so squishy soft. Love this. I'm gonna have a lot of fun spinning for socks with this. Ooh, it's so soft. Then oh, I found a farm on Etsy that sells Cormo, like you do. And I decided to just try them out because I love Cormo fiber. Why not? Hand dyed, even better. So I bought these bumps of Cormo from Clabber Glen Farm. They're in Michigan. And I checked this morning and they don't have anything in their shop. So maybe they're closed for the holidays, but um, they're all hand dyed, 100% Cormo from their farm. Each one was about 1.6, 2.3 is what I'm reading off some of these tags. Um, I think there was one that wasn't really labeled in the listing, but it was, you know, they were all roughly the same size. So I don't know if I'll spin and ply. Look at it, it's the blue and oranges again. I'm so attracted to blue and orange apparently right now. Um, maybe I'll ply these together. Maybe that's what I'll, I'll knit like a hat or something. And I'll apply the blue and orange together and just do something fun, a fun little accessory. So there's my Cormo, because you can never have enough Cormo. And then my last acquisition is another from um, Nitty City. And it's another, it's like the exact same thing that I'm spinning right now for that Avalon shawl. It's the Sweet Georgia BFL Silk Braid in a solid color. And the um, fleece artist, Revealette, um hand dyed bump, if you will. So this has the purples and blues and violets and a pop of white in there, darker colors. It's like burgundy and yeah. And then I got the solid color to ply it with. And I think these I will actually ply together like I was going to do with the blue and orange. I mean, yeah, blue and orange, but I decide not to. This colorway is Black Plum from Sweet Georgia. So that's 75 BFL, 25 Tussa Silk, 100 grams in this braid. And this one is 65 merino, 17 silk, 18 linen, and this is 50 grams. So um, what I was planning on doing before was plying this with the solid and then any leftover solid, I would just ply back on itself so that I'd have like the two to work with. So I think I will do that with this one because these colors are less contrasty than the blue and the orange, which I didn't think would look that great, but um, yeah, so there's those. And that is all for my fiber acquisitions. That's all. That's it. Small drop in the bucket. Um, but this is what I picked up when I was in New York. I go a little bit overboard when I go back to the States. It's going to slow down a little, although I did buy some Mahabaldi Hoy yesterday, but that won't come in for like another two weeks, so... <laughs> It's hobbledehoy. I love them. Um, anyway, so before I do my little closing, I will have a, um, I have a quick shop announcement. I will have a um, Cyber Monday sale. 
I wanted to start it on Sunday, November 27th, uh, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, until Tuesday, the following Tuesday, at 6 a.m. Um, the whole shop, everything that's going to be in the shop is going to be 20% off. Um, I won't show anything here right now, but I'll have a bunch of one-off bags in different sizes. I will have a couple popcorn bags and a couple ice cream sundae bags in this update for the sale. And um, when they sell, they sell. That's it. Um, but I will throw up a couple um, sneak peeks and announcement information stuff on my Instagram feed if you're interested in seeing some of the styles. And that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you for joining me. I will see you next week. And if you're in the States, I hope you have a very happy and healthy Thanksgiving. And next week, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, Laura from the Dyer's Notebook podcast and the Dyer for Jinx Yarns in... I don't remember when it was this year, but she did a podcast where she just went through all of her whips and kind of talked about what's been just sitting around and what she might frog or whatnot. And so I thought that that was a really fun idea and I'm going to do that for my next podcast. So it won't be a normal podcast layout. It will have no spinning. It will just be um, going over my current and not so current whips uh it may be a long episode because i have a lot of whips but i thought it was really interesting to see all the bags all the patterns all the yarn all the stitch markers all the everything and um, what she might be frogging and what she was going to save and continue and add it to her short to-do list um and I will be doing the same in my next episode. So something to look forward to. I will see you next week. Thanks for joining me. Bye.